Hi guys, welcome back to the shop. Uh, today I'm, I'm going to work toward the honing on the uh, TS-125 1979 model. Uh, I'm going to work on that, but I've also had some questions about how do I know that uh, the equipment, measuring equipment that I use uh, is accurate or not? And that's a good question. Uh, I'm not going to go into reading micrometers or depth gauges or dial bore gauges or any of that stuff. There's a lot of better uh, videos on YouTube for that. I'm just going to kind of show you what I do real quick and uh, just to make sure that everything is, is uh, accurate and up to snuff and then I'll show you how, the, how I get the uh, uh, the clearance on my cylinder after I bore it and then hone it. So let me show you what, I'm, what I've got here. Okay, it all kind of starts with the micrometer. Uh, this is what I do anyway. I'm sure there's, there's other ways to do it. But the first thing I do is I just verify that my micrometer is, is set up properly. And I do that with a standard. This is a two to three inch micrometer, and I, I put the standard in here and run it up until I contact both, right like that. And then I've got a, a clicker here on the end. You can hear it. That's, that's supposed to tell you that, the, that you've got it tight enough. That's it. And then you take a look at the, the reading here to make sure that the lines are, are zeroed out. And this one is. Everything's good. So I know when I start out that my micrometer is set up properly. Like I say, I'm not going to go through reading it or, or changing it, but just before I uh, jump into another project like this, that's what I do. I just quickly verify it with the standard and then what I end up doing is I uh, go ahead and measure my piston. Everything while I'm boring is based off the piston. Make sure it's clean and make sure that your contact points there are clean. Now uh, this is a Suzuki, so they tell me to make my measurement at 0.91 uh, Imperial. I don't remember what the metric one is. So right about there. So there, that's what I'm going to make my measurement. It doesn't have to be perfect. It just You just have to try to do it the best you can. So right there. So the first thing I do is I set, set my piston in here and, and run, her, run her down approximately at the point that I just marked on here. And then you just get a feel for it. And you have to develop your own feel and and once you've done this a while then you can trust that feel okay so the reading I'm getting here on this brand new uh, this is a second over one millimeter is uh, 2.2425 okay now I go to my next thing I've got to move you over or move the equipment over. Uh, I'll do one or the other. Okay, the next thing I do is uh, I set my, this is a sun and uh, gauge and it's got its, uh, it's, it's a little unique to most of them out there is that it has a micrometer base here. Uh, this is what they call the nest. This right here, this is where my you can't see the whole tool because it's up here out of view. But you've got different rods and whatnot for, for your different uh, uh, 
diameters. And currently I'm reading, uh, I've got a two inch rod in here. That I know it's longer than that, but it's, this is the two inch rod. So I set, uh, actually I probably ought to go back just a little bit further. This this is called this is the standard for the dial bore gauge and you set it up according to the criteria uh, you put it in here to measure you line up the two arrows and you're supposed to end up with this reading that's on the the uh, the standard here so that way you know your gauge is right everything is calibrated as it should be before you start anything else then, once you know that your dial bore gauge is calibrated, then uh, you come over and you dial in on the micrometer here the exact size that you got with the piston. So I've got uh, two inches, two, four, two, five dialed in. So then I come over and set up my, my uh, gauge right here and adjust it down here until I'm zeroed out right here. So this is telling me, this, I'm setting it up for exactly that size. Now, since I'm zeroed out and I've got the diameter of the piston. Now what I'm looking for is the clearance, otherwise the, the clearance between the piston and the cylinder. So at that point, all I have to do is run the bore gauge up and down in the cylinder, and I'll show you how, you, how we do that here in a minute, and that will give me uh, the size that it is over the piston size. Okay. Because you got to remember that the piston size is what's what I have calibrated into the to the gauge. Okay, got that out of my way, and now I can uh, I can look at the cylinder itself. I started honing this last night, but I have not finished it. So uh, I'll show you where I'm at now. And since this is calibrated to the size of the piston, I go ahead and insert it in here and I rock it up until it stops itself right up here, this way. It'll go this way a lot. But see, you're, you're tilting the gauge. So you, you raise it up until it stops moving. And I'm setting at about seven. So that's telling me, I'm on the plus side of the zero. It's telling me that, that the hole that I'm measuring is seven thousandths bigger than the piston size that I pro, that I uh, uh, calibrated into the gauge. And then we go the other way. Oops. And again, we're looking at just about seven. Okay. And then you, of course, do the same at the bottom. And this will tell you whether you have any taper. And again, the same seven. So the spec on this is uh, zero, uh, point zero zero one eight to point zero zero two one. So we're shooting for just about two thousandths between the piston and the cylinder. So what I'm going to do now is uh, I'm going to go back over to the uh, honing machine and we'll finish out the hone. But that's how we calibrate it, how we know we're doing the right thing, and how to read it. And right now we're, we've got about half the distance now, not even that. Uh, we, want, we want about two, and we're setting right at seven. So we've got a little ways to go yet. OK, 
Okay, we're back over at the honing machine. We're getting, getting some oil here on the stones and up inside. periodically uh, check it but you also turn it around and go go at it from the other way too is pretty messy. I usually get it all over me. And the wife says, what's that smell? And I have trouble getting my gloves off. So I've got a pair of pliers over here so I can grab them. closer okay guys I need to explain something here when I was putting the uh, uh, this video together I noticed that I kept saying we were going to go for between 18 and and uh, 20 and actually it was between 
zero zero one eight and zero zero two or two thousandths and I just need to clarify because I was saying two thousandths and at the same time I was saying we had seven and what it is is uh, I just was saying we were at seven and it's actually seven ten thousandths uh, otherwise uh, this is a thousandths, one is, and this is two, that's two thousandths. So when I was saying we were at seven, we were at seven ten thousandths. I just, I, it's good in my, in my mind, but I'm sure that it's got some people shaking their heads out there. So I just wanted to, to go over that again and uh, just let you know that uh, our actual setup is about two thousandths. That's where we're going. And it, it may be a little bit less, it may be a little bit more, but that's our target. And uh, when, I'm, when I'm looking at that, I'm just saying seven, eight, nine, whatever, and then one. But I just wanted to clarify that because I know there's, it's, I probably got some people shaking their head out there. Okay, after that being said, I just want to run you through what we ended up with here. And we're at about 18. And turn this 90 degrees. And we're about 18. And then we turn it over. And that's actually about 19 on the bottom. <clears throat> so, I think we're good. So now we need to uh, get it set up and do our chamfering. I think I hit that switch or something. I just want you to see uh, the honing job here, how that turned out. You can see the marks in there from my bore gauge, that's all those are. It's okay, so our next step on this is going to be the uh, the chamfering, but uh, while I've got this here, I'm going to go ahead and do the ring gap because we're done with the bore. So we've got the rings here, and we'll just push this down. And give it a check. And our ring gap is supposed to be between six and thirteen thousandths. And we've got a nice snug ten on that one. So that one's well within. And same thing right there. Nice, nice snug tin. So we're not going to have to do any filing on those. So I've, I've got to make a modification to my holding stand for this uh, Suzuki cylinder. So I'll get that done and then we'll go through the chamfering. I probably won't show all that, but I'll show part of it. Okay guys, it's, uh, it's pretty close quarters here, so you're probably not going to be able to see much while I'm actually doing it, so I'm just going to kind of give you a, a view of inside the, uh, the cylinder here, 
and it's it's just really tight. Uh, I'm using mostly cartridge roll to uh, take care of the edges. It's just uh, it's just too tight in there to to get in there with a burr. Uh, you'll be all over the place. I've I've uh, been in there in a couple places where I just had to use a burr, and uh, it's just it's so tight you end up. Uh, skipping out of it so I'm just trying to uh, trying to roll the, the edges the best I can with a cartridge roll that should be the best and that way you're not running the risk of uh, coming out and skipping around the cylinder so let me uh, get you set up on a stand here You don't have to do much. All you got to do is take care of that sharp edge. And believe me, the cartridge roll is the best way to do it. And you're not trying to hold on to your tool all the time like you are when you're trying to port. Go ahead and go in there and run your finger up and down. That's the best judge. If it feels sharp, it is sharp. And you need to take care of it or you'll have a ring break because of it. feeling pretty good and another thing is to make sure that you uh, you take care of this end here too uh, with the, the scallop area here so I'll be doing that now I guess And then be sure to take care of uh, the top part here. Yeah. 
Feels good. Doesn't take much. Just be careful. So there you have it guys, another cylinder bored and honed and ready to go. Uh, I've actually got I think maybe seven of these to go yet. I don't know whether people are interested in seeing it over and over and over or not. Uh, you know, drop me, a, drop me a line in the comment section or something and let me know. Uh, surely you don't want to see all these things. but. Uh, you know, maybe I can throw another one in there, but I think people are going to get kind of tired of it. I've just got a lot of them to do right now, and uh, I think I'll just uh, maybe do something else. I've I've got the 170 or 125 Yamaha to jump back on, and I've got some work yet to do to the TC 125. Uh, so I'll probably do a little bit of that in the meantime uh, while I'm knocking out some of these others but maybe I'll stick another one in there just let me know what you think whether whether you want to see that kind of stuff more often or not anyhow thanks for going along on the ride and we'll see you next video